My name is Paul Pines, and I'm going to be reading from a book called Adrift on Blinding Light, a section called The Cry of Merlin. Neruda's voice rises from the page, grieving for Lorca, Alberti, and Mayakovsky, likens them to a river, a mountain, and a crystal, and himself to a valley with subterranean waters pooling at its heart. It is night. I ride through the dark on a bus past little boxes of light. In awe of this solitude, I call my life. Prayer before drowning. At last I understand how we shed our lives in time, peel off outrage, terror, and despair like wet clothes after a freezing rain. Nothing to fear. We shall all sink back into the unconscious of this world, your warm matrix, Isis, patroness of seamen. Dark women are in the depth of the sea, our own depth in the depth of the world. They are the swimmers who take us down. Trees in the rain are drenched in this sea, as are grass, stones, cars on the highway. Dark women swim through them and into this room saying, Desire is the measure of all things. I tell them I want to know what is already here but hidden and ask them to connect you that way to me. Orpheus loses Eurydice to return with the vision of Eurydice which dissolves like a word on his tongue. So he goes down again to the forge where forms are made to emerge with a song that contains a moth playing at the source of desire, a river of fire that flows both ways. The Cry of Merlin the voice is not the word, though it shapes and contains it, rising from a fire that makes shadows dance on the wall of our cranium. There is another voice beneath sound, such as we hear in dreams with an inner ear, that grows so loud it can move through us with a force that makes us speak in tongues. At times we are aware of a question coiled in the silence where breath begins, which can be answered only with an inner voice that will not speak until we are dumbfounded. To be found dumb is to perish into what we hear. Café de la Parroquia Morning light arches in the colonnade. Looking down his nose, the waiter pours café con leche from two steaming kettles while patrons wanting refills tap their spoons. I recall my first visit to Veracruz as a boy intoxicated with his life, tap my glass and watch my skeleton dance down Avenida Independencia. Remembering Sita. At night I understand your nails as frozen ponds whose depth cannot be measured until it makes me cry. So I stand and repeat, standing, standing, walk and repeat, walking, walking, until I am purified by sixteen kinds of knowledge like cool fingers on my brow. Then I think again of your nails, the tender purple ring around their white half-moons, and know I will always be sad.
Rama's dream. I search for you beneath the sheets. The skin of time asleep touches my limbs. And for an instant, I believe it's you as you were touching me as I had been. I will always love you in this peculiar way. A word about the sleep man. I read my daughter stories the Otoi told their children to prepare them for the sleep man, explaining how Coyote became a thief, little white rabbit got pink eyes, details she will need to find her way through the landscape of her life. I am like every father who tries to explain the seven stars in the Big Dipper are also seven clans to which she is related, seven angels, seven spirits who will advise her in distress, comfort her in mourning, join her in celebration. Seven eyes that look back in time to a place of first things where horse and buffalo racing to determine who was fastest left a trail of dust that became the Milky Way. Seven kisses that wait for her in heaven where all events are marked before they are recorded. Yahwa Shige. Sacred World. The flowers of the spring moons vanish more quickly than those of the summer. Both die into the rainbow, Tulula, where their colors come alive again after the rain. I learn as I go how to read the book of the world. How many flowers does it take, Tulula? Christmas in Glens Falls. At the Unitarian Universalist Church, a man in a Rudolph hat complete with electric nose, welcomes us. The children's choir is followed by an elder whistling, What child is this? To remind us of the child reborn in each of us. While uptown among the Methodists, a transsexual tenor in full drag announces she will no longer answer to the name of Robert. Medical Miracles. Over a bagel and coffee at Cool Beans, my brother informs me his heart is leaking, and the echocardiogram indicates that one of these days he'll have to install a pig valve as a prosthesis which works like a ping pong ball in a basket. Surely we can do better than that, he says, considering the huge advances in medicine. Billions in research spent by Sandoz and DuPont. Surely, if he can just live long enough, he might one day take a pill and turn into a six-foot blue-eyed Aryan named Hans. Two. See that guy by the shop and save? Yeah, the one, the Viking in later Hosen. Would you believe he used to be a short, overweight, paranoid, delusional schizophrenic with a mitral prolapse? And the woman next to him? The one who looks like Madonna, she used to be his wife. Thank you.